Okay, so in this problem, um, from our previous discussion, you'll probably see that uh, direct integration uh, could possibly work here, um, but would be a challenge. Uh, conjugate beam would also be kind of a mess, um, but could be done. But we're going to focus on virtual work today. I think this is an easier problem to do with virtual work. So we'll, uh, we'll start there. A uh, conjugate mean might be uh, an, an equal partner uh, in this proce process. But uh, you can see that um, the fixed end would become free in the conjugate space and the free end would become fixed. And since this problem wants the slope and displacement C, we just have to find the shear and moment in the conjugate beam with the moment from this is loading. I think the moment might be a little uh, hard to deal with. It, it could be okay. But since we're talking about virtual work, I want to apply that one. So one thing to think about in the future, too, is I want the slope and displacement at C, so we'll end up with a virtual load and a virtual couple at C. Uh, in both those cases, we'll be able to write a single equation that's valid for the whole structure, so that won't be too bad. Now when we look at the real uh, situation, um, I'm going to have to have how many equations? Uh, two, right? One that's good from zero to seven, where the load is continuous, and then a different one from seven to fourteen. So, if I'm looking at this section, uh, which side do you want to look after I cut it there? The left side or the right side? Left. Yeah, the left side may not be so bad. So we'll do that. Uh, maybe I'll do the right side just because we haven't done a right side. Just to show you, no, you don't like that? Okay. We'll do the left side. Uh, when I do the second section from 7 to 14, I think, it's a, I think it's more clear that you would want to use the right side. So with that as our strategy, I'll just draw an arrow to say, for this section we'll go right, and for this section we'll go left. In an era of non-bipartisanship, we're doing left and right. Which is uncapable. Which our our current government is incapable of doing, even if it's to our own good. So, and that's the end of my political discussion. <laughs> because if we start it, it will not end. All right. So at A, we'll need the reactions at A. So I'll need the shear at A, and I'll draw that as a positive value, and the shear at I'm sorry, the moment at A. And there's the positive direction for that. Uh, we will need the uh, concentrated equivalent force for that area. It's rectangles would be base times height, which is 7 meters times 25 kilonewtons per meter, which is 175 kilonewtons. And that'll act halfway through the distance or about 3.5 meters. So I'm going to sum my moments about A and make sure I'm in equilibrium and I should be able to solve for that moment. So starting at A, uh, the assumed positive bending moment that I drew under my sign convention is negative. The concentrated equivalent and the applied force are both what? Positive or negative moments? Negative. So the first one would be 175 kilonewtons. Uh, and the centroid is 3.5 meters. And then to the 75 kilonewton force is the full length of the structure, which is 14 newtons. So somebody out there saw for the moment at A. Looks like it's going to be negative. That's a hard one for me to do in my head. Somebody else get that? So say it to me again. One thousand. Negative one thousand six hundred sixty-two point five. Anybody else get that? Yep. Okay. Cool. The negative sign makes sense to me. And then uh, let's go ahead and get the shear. We'll need that. So we'll sum forces in the y direction and make sure we're in equilibrium. 
So we've got the shear force acting up at A. And then we've got the force, the concentrated equivalent force is down. And this applied force is also down. So that looks like the shear at A is going to be 250. Is that right? Okay. So with that done, now let's go back and try to find our moment equations. And we will have first an equation that's valid from 0 to 7. This will be in the first range. And let me redraw that free body diagram. So there's our segment x long. We have the shear, which we found was 250 kilonewtons. And then we found the moment, which was negative, um, 1,662.5 kilonewton meters. And then I'll get the concentrated equivalent of that distributed load, uh, which should be the base times the height. The height is 25, so that's going to be 25x. And then we'll have the internal moment. Anything else? I guess I should have sketched in the fact that there was a distributed load and I'm getting the concentrated equivalent of it. Kind of jammed that in there. Sorry about that. It wasn't very good planning for my uh, numbers. So now I will um, some moments at the cut of this free body and make sure it's in equilibrium. So my internal moment, the way I've drawn it here in positive, is also a positive moment in my statics equation. The concentrated equivalent is positive or negative? It's positive. So the force is 25x and the moment arm is x over 2. That accounts for that. And then I've got the force. That creates negative moment. That'll be 250 kilonewtons times distance x. And then I've got the um, value here. I just realized um, I said negative and drew it negative. So with drawing it as a negative bending moment, this should be a positive value. Sorry about that. And when I add it into my moment equations, that's a positive number. So 1,662.5. And everybody's got the same units. So when I solve for the moment at x, what do I get? Uh, so I'm going to get minus 12.5x squared, that's this first term, plus 250x. Um, this should have been a positive. Sorry about that. Right there, that should be a positive. So it's negative here, though. and that has the value of kilonewton meters. So there's my moment expression for the first seven meters. The only thing we can check about it right now is that at x equals zero, I should get the, the reaction moment, which I found is 1,662.5 kilonewton meters, and when you put in x equals zero, this term cancels, this term cancels, you get that. We'll do the check in a minute and we get the second value, which is going to be good from 7 to 14. So now the free body diagram for that structure, as we talked earlier, is to the right. So here's the right side of that cut with my 75 kilonewton force. So measured from the left to that cut at some distance x leaves the segment of my free body, which would be the length minus x, which is 14 minus x. And then I have my positive moment.
Well, that's an easy one to check. So um, when I sum the moments at this cut, again, make sure it's in equilibrium. Uh, I'm using right-hand rules, so this would be a negative moment. And this would also be a negative moment. So the force is 75 kilonewtons and the distance is 14 minus x meters. So then my moment will be that. So negative 75 times 14 minus x and that'll be kilonewton meters. Now can I check that? Yeah, I know the moment at the free end, right? And the free end is at 14. When I put in x equal 14, it does zero out. Let's check at the point where they match. So uh, what is the moment when x is equal to 7 for this guy? And what is the moment when x is equal to 7 for this guy? Uh, they're both going to come out negative, I hope. 525. This is 525? Yes. What about that one? Yeah. So 525, and that's kilonewton meters. That's negative. Thank you. I don't have room. I'll just put it up there at the top. Sorry about that. But I'll put my little green check mark. So everything seems to be good with those. So now I need to move on to my virtual system. In this problem, I'm going to have two. I'm going to have one for slope and one for displacement. So let's do the displacement one first. So um, my virtual load will look like this. So I'll have same geometry except out here at C I'll have one. So how many equations do I need to write for this situation? Just one. And I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to cut the system and look to the right. So if I were to do that, so this this E equation is going to be good from 0 to 14. And the free body is going to look something like this. I'll have my unit 1 and it'll be located at some distance x and the length of the remaining segment will be the length minus x or 14 minus x and then I'll have the internal bending moment for that which we're using the lowercase value. And then if I sum moments of this free body at the cut and put it in equilibrium, what do I get? Well, again, using right-hand rule, I have the internal moment is negative, the end moment is negative, the moment arm is 14 minus x, so it looks like my virtual moment it's just going to be equal to negative 14 minus x. And we can check that. Looking at this system, what do you think the moment at the free end is? Zero. So at x equal 14, this ought to give me zero, and it does. What do you think the moment at the reaction is for a single load of one at a distance 14 meters away? 14. You put an x equals zero and you get negative 14. So I, I think that that works. If this is the correct system, that's the moment in that system. Now what about the uh, other one? So this will be the virtual couple or the moment. So again, we have the same geometry. Now to find the slope, I apply a couple here. And I'm going to apply a couple that looks like that. 
The reason I'm doing that is when the element under that load bends, it's going to bend this way, which would be a positive slope. So if I get a negative answer, I know it's a negative slope. And all I have to do is do the sa exact same thing. So I'll make a cut. I'll look at the right-hand side again, except that's the only load. So I'll draw a same, the free body diagram will look very similar to the one we just did, except I have this unit couple at the end. It will still be located at some distance x from the left side. The right side of my free body will still be the length minus x or 14 minus x. And I'll still have an internal moment, but in our notation, we subscript that theta to indicate that's the virtual moment due to a, a couple, a rotation. So again, using right-hand rule, I sum the moments at the cut, make sure I'm in equilibrium. What do I have? Well, I have minus m theta and then plus 1. That's pretty easy. So the virtual moment is just equal to 1. Okay? So now for displacement, so the displacement at C is going to be the integration of, remember, across the whole length of the structure, the real moment, the virtual moment, divided by EI dx. So our, our integral will be broken into a, a section that's good from 0 to 7, and then from 7 to 14. And we have the real moments for those two segments. The virtual moment for the whole segment, the whole length, is this guy. So that means I'll end up with, oh, and by the way, E and I are constant, so I'll just go ahead and factor those out. So my first integral will be between 0 and 7, and the real moment is all that. So what is that going to be? That's minus 12.5x squared plus 250x minus 1,066.25. So there's my real moment times my virtual moment, which is minus 14x. Or, so x, 14 minus x, and there's a minus sign, so I'll put that up front. That, does that go okay? So again, it's the real moment times the virtual moment. The second segment will go from 7 to 14, so that'll, that'll get me my whole length. The real moment changes, right? It's negative 75 uh, 14 minus x. That's the real moment. And the virtual moment is the same, negative 14 minus x. So that will change that and I'll get 14 minus x, and that'll bend be dx, and then we can close up our bracket. And again, just so you guys can keep track of these, there's the real moment, there's the virtual moment from zero to seven. You can see our real moment changes, but our virtual moment is unchanged. And again, for the exam, that's good enough. That's what I'm calling the virtual work equation. So the last part of this problem would be, what is the slope at C? Well, the equation looks the same, except the virtual moment is the one due to the couple. So everything in our previous expression is the same except the, the virtual moments are replaced by one. Everything else is just as we discussed. So again, I'll have this one over EI factored out. 
I'll have the first integral from 0 to 7. Uh, this minus sign here came with the, the virtual one, so our real moment is just minus 12.5 x squared plus 250x minus 1,662.5. That's the real moment. And then the virtual moment is 1. And then the second segment from 7 to 14, here's my real moment, which was, um, I messed up. It was minus 75. 14 minus x. I know that's kind of odd notation. And then again times 1. Okay? That's good enough for me. I guess to finish this up for the instruction part, you can see that this part the moments are the same and then this is the virtual moment due to the couple and although it's hard to see it here that's the real moment again those match then there's my virtual moment for the couple any questions about that? that may be a little too much to ask you to do for an exam but I can easily ask you to do one of these instead of both. I think that's reasonable. Any other questions?